In the past decades, the concept of studying galaxies, stars and planets to interpret information about them has had a tremendous outcome, making it one of the most promising and fascinating fields in the history of human research. According to documented history, recorded by the ancient library of Alexandria in Egypt, Africa was one of the pioneers in space study. So far, we haven't yet an African-born astronaut in space, even though programs across the continent, particularly in the fields of satellites and telescopes, are on the rise. In the last 20 years, countries such as Egypt, Nigeria, South Africa, Angola, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Rwanda have established and expanded their space agencies, valuing space programs on the continent at more than $7 billion. South Africa is in a bidding war with Australia for the Square Kilometre Array SCAR. The Square Kilometre Array is a multinational radio telescope project planned for the Australia-South Africa region. It will be 50 times more sensitive than today's most powerful observatories and it intends to place Africa on the map of space exploration, thanks to the partnership of South Africa's scientific societies and the country's government. This project will allow us to survey our skies faster than ever before. According to the Deputy Science Minister, South Africa is well positioned to host the world's largest telescope because the costs would be lower. Welcome to Think Rich Africa, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship, rather than global pity, is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Many of you are probably curious as to why South Africa is taking part in this initiative. The project was first conceived in the late 1990s, with the final design completed in late 2010. In 2010, several countries expressed interest in winning the proposal for this project. The Square Kilometer Array Organization was founded as an intergovernmental organization in November 2011 and the project was moved from collaboration to a non-profit corporation. In a confidential report the following year, the Square Kilometre Array Side Advisory Group judged that the South African bid was more substantial. South Africa and Australia were chosen as the project's locations because they had the finest view of the Milky Way galaxy and the least amount of radio interference. The Kauru which covers 400,000 square kilometers and is known as the Land of First in Khoisan, is a huge and sparsely populated plateau of scrub, grassland and occasional farmsteads in the northern Cape province of South Africa. On a trip to the Karoo, Deputy Science Minister Derek Henkham said the global economic crisis might provide South Africa with an advantage. The cost will almost certainly rise to $2 billion, he told media adding that funding countries' resources are already stretched. Because it's a big one, South Africa is a terrific place to be. Engineers will connect antennas in the barren Karoo region to a network of dishes reaching throughout southern and eastern Africa, as far as Ghana, if South Africa wins the auction. Even though towns are uncommon in the Karoo and its residents frequently travel hundreds of kilometers between villages, a group of experts, astronomers, find the sparseness of human existence compelling. Low levels of light pollution and scarce mobile phone signals and radio microwaves make it the perfect home for two world-class telescopes. The Southern African Large Telescope, SALT, and the Square Kilometre Array, SCAR. SALT is the largest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, and when the SKA project is completed in 2030, it will be the world's largest telescope system, with installations in sub-Saharan Africa and Australia. This project will be capable of working over a wide frequency range, making it 50 times more sensitive than any previous radio device. Bernie Fanaroff, 
the director of SKA South Africa, is convinced that the initiative will one day deliver Nobel Prize winning astrophysics research. The operation of the project will demand the employment of high-performance large computer engines with a capacity greater than global internet traffic. Radio astronomy's ability to provide the most detailed images in all of the astronomy will be used. If all goes according to plan, the initiative will survey the sky 10,000 times faster than before, according to the project's founders. Thanks to this improved telescope technology, astronomers will be able to better examine the skies and evaluate their constituents. According to reports, the entire region that these telescopes will occupy once completed will be 11 million square feet, which is massive. With receiving stations extending out to 3,000 kilometers, radio astronomy will be fully utilized to study celestial bodies in the skies and beyond. The primary location for Australia's bid is Miller Station, which is around 100 kilometers, 60 miles, west of Mikathara in Western Australia. Other antennae will be placed throughout Australia and New Zealand. The final decision is anticipated to be made by the SKA Steering Committee, which represents a consortium of 17 countries interested in the project. However, South Africa has an advantage over Australia in terms of labor, building, and electricity. According to Justin Jonas, the engineer and astronomer in charge of the project. The SCAR, a giant new radio telescope with 3,000 antenna dishes, is expected to offer new insight into fundamental concerns about the cosmos, such as how it began, why it's growing, and whether it includes life beyond our planet, according to scientists. Near Sutherland, a village in the southwest of the country, South Africa, possesses the largest optical telescope in the Southern Hemisphere. Namibia's High Energy Stereoscopic System, the world's largest cosmic ray telescope, is located 100 kilometers, 60 miles, south of Windhoek, the country's capital. The project aims to serve as a catalyst for science, technology, engineering, business opportunities, employment, and innovation, with the potential to establish Africa as a hub for macro data transfer and analytics. Another main reason South Africa was chosen for this project, besides its location, is its research capacity in astronomy, which has become more advanced in terms of human resources and can support world-class research and strong new ideas from all over the world. The cost of construction of the square kilometer arrays is estimated to be around $2.2 billion, including $780 million for phase one, which will account for 10% of the array's total capacity. Numerous delays have proven to be impediments to the project, which has been in the works for 30 years. Contracts for initial construction began in 2018, with completion of the array not expected until 2030. The first phase will be constructed between 2023 and 2027, providing an operational array capable of conducting the initial round of scientific studies. Phase two is expected to be completed around 2030, providing full sensitivity for frequencies up to 14 gigahertz. Finally, a third phase will be constructed to increase the frequency range to 30 gigahertz. However, the first two phases are the primary focus, with completion expected around 2030 if all goes well. The square kilometer array is being designed with the understanding that doubt will require clarification from fields such as astrophysics, fundamental physics, and cosmology. It will be implemented in a variety of fields upon completion of the project. Astronomers will examine the limits of general relativity, such as the behavior of spacetime in highly curved regions, by using pulsars as gravitational wave detectors. The sensitivity of the square kilometer array in the 21 centimeter hydrogen line will map billions of galaxies at the edge of the observable universe, providing researchers with a large scale of study and comparison. Imaging hydrogen throughout the universe 
will provide a three-dimensional view of the initial ripples of structures that help galaxies and structures form. Additionally, the hypothetical effects of dark energy will be investigated. Additionally, the Square Kilometer Array will aid in the investigation of the nature of cosmic magnetism and its role in the ever-evolving universe. However, the most alluring study will be the Square Kilometers Array's potential for detecting extremely weak radio emissions known as leakage from nearby extraterrestrial civilizations, assuming they exist. The pipeline operations have everyone excited as they ensure that the entire project is completed on time. Though this project has a lot of potential, it does have some shortcomings. The amount of sensory data collected poses a massive storage problem and will necessitate flawless real-time signal processing to reduce the entire raw data set to relevant arrived information. China has also pushed for a unified beamforming design, allowing other major countries to withdraw from the project. On a completely different note, the project has been met with strong opposition from farmers, businesses and individuals alike. According to the advocacy group Save the Karoo, the quiet radio zone would increase unemployment in the South African region, where the unemployment rate is already above 32%. Farmers have also stated that if they were forced to sell their land, the agriculture-based economy in the Karoo region would collapse. In its 30-year history, the Square Kilometer Array project has seen many ups and downs. Although it's a sure fact that the project will proceed, there are concerns about further delays and whether or not the project will be completed on time remains unknown. The extents to which mankind is willing to explore the unknown are astounding, and that in itself is a victory. If this project is successful, it will be an even sweeter accomplishment. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be in this video, but if not, leave a comment and let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing, and turning on your notification.